Hello, my beautiful thinking people. This is your host, Clyde Phillips Sr., coming at you once again with the new update. I told you as I received information, I would come back and uh, bring you guys up to speed. So, we're talking about... Have you ever dreamed of being in a... Have you ever dreamed about being able to take people at a moment's notice and not have an emotional care about it? Because you can't do it without removing your emotional sensitivity, okay? So, in order to do that, what would you think would be one of your first things you would have to learn? And where would you get that knowledge? And how would you keep that knowledge from falling into the wrong hands that could thwart your efforts? Yeah, exactly. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. So, if I was going to become an assassin tomorrow, how would I go about it? Actually, you know what? I'm not going to go there because then somebody's going to accuse me of inciting other people into becoming murderers and assassins, going and seeking out information. No, I'm not going to go there. So let me just say this. It's extremely hard to become an assassin of any sort. So we're hearing rumors now, or information about the uh, the past event with uh, uh, President Trump, ex-President Trump, Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump as well, by the way, and that's his real name. So the information coming back is that this was an inside job, it was not done alone. All the preparations and things that went into this succeeding, because it did succeed, regardless of what some people want to tell you. It was a successful attempt. It didn't accomplish its, its ultimate goal, but it was a successful attempt. It got around all the precautions, all of the... What is going on here? I can't even cover that. Sorry, folks, I'm trying to cover that sun that's glaring in here, but it's not working. Anyways. Okay, I'm back. This individual was able to get around all the precautions, all the perimeters, all the officers, all the Secret Service in that entire area and was able to get off his shots. Even when the police finally did respond, they must have rattled that ladder so loud so that he could hear it. And then he pointed the AR-15 at them and they scuttled out of there as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna address that one point right now. Those who know me, those who work for me, uh, I had one of the largest uh, protection services in all of Southern Ontario. I think it was the second largest. Okay, and the reason I tell you that is so that you realize I, I have experience. I have a lot of experience. I started in protection, well, probably since I was about eight years old, protecting the kids in the neighborhood from bullies and stuff, and then it just grew from there. We are the ones who run towards the danger. How else can we protect you if we ourselves don't run towards the danger? You're telling me that me going up that ladder, I'm going to make enough noise to alert him? And if I did make enough noise to alert him and he pointed his gun at me, is that the end of my effort? No. No. I'm going to find a way to look over the edge and I'm going to take them out that way. Or, I'm going to radio and have ladders put in different locations and I'm going to choose a new ladder. And when I choose that new ladder, I don't know why I did that. When I choose that new ladder, I'm going to take them out. That's all there is to it. Two cops were sent scurrying and were unable to thwart the threat. 
None of this stuff is making any sense. And what do they start reporting on? They start reporting on stupidness about him having a bicycle. Well, we know he didn't do this on a bicycle. We know, unless some idiotic individuals set up the ladder and everything for him, put the gun up there where he could get a hold of it, and he rode over there on a bicycle. There was no bicycle that I saw in the videos or the pictures, and there was no mention of a bicycle from the little bits of recordings that I did here. So, what gives? What's going on? Like, this is just really weird. Folks, my original opinion still stands. I'm even more convinced than ever that this was a planned event. And I can just say this without pointing any fingers. The planners were stupid. You're not going to get away with something like this without getting caught. You have so many loose ends. Did you think that by having the kid killed that you were going to be exempt from scrutiny? Oh no, there's going to be scrutiny going on like crazy. And you know what? Again, if I was in charge, I would step up the protection on Donald Trump. Uh, and again, I'm not a supporter. If I was in the States, I wouldn't have voted for him the first time, second time, third time, whatever. Okay? But he's a human being, and I don't believe what happened was right or fair. I would tighten up his security so heavily that he would make it to the election. And I know if he makes it to the election, he's going to win. So with that in mind, what's going to happen when he wins? Well, with the Secret Service that he has now and the things that are going on now, I, I, I mean, it's a toss-up as to what's going to happen. But somebody held out some hope to me and talked about white hats said, you know what? It's all going to be taken care of. Okay, well, I hope I hope that assassinations are a thing of the past. I hope that these type of people who have that kind of thought in their mind are totally turned around. Like, somebody's got to turn them around. Give them a reason to live, because really, it doesn't make much sense. Okay, there's more information now about the shooter on the uh, water tower. And the information says that he was witnessed by people, actually witnessed by people. So if that's if that's true, which it seems to be, um, was he the secondary person? Was he the one that actually took the shot that whizzed past Trump's ear or through his ear? And did he just make the mistake of pulling the trigger just as Donald was turning his head? Uh, it seems plausible to me. The evidence seems to be speaking to that. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, that could be a thing. Anyways, I'm not going to change my opinion unless there is concrete proof that shows me otherwise. Because you know what? I don't mind doing the research that informs my opinion from one side to the other. I don't mind listening to the stories that come out of one side saying, oh, oh no, this was a totally, you know, accidental situation. This guy just up one day decided, let me do this. No, 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 not true, not even possible. And then the time and preparation it would take to get the materials that apparently he had in his possession and to get all the planning done, etc. Yeah, he would have been he would have been stifled a long time ago. Uh, somebody from a store would have called in. Uh, you know, he was using his dad's uh, AR-15, uh, but his dad, I'm sure, has him locked. How did he get him? How did he get him without his dad knowing? I'm sure his dad does not leave his uh, gun box keys laying around the house. I mean, if you needed to protect your family, you want that gun locker key in your pocket right next to you ready to go when you need it anyways a lot of things seem too fishy to me and uh, there'll be more information to come out and I will get back to you as more information flows folks please stay safe stay healthy 
stay as happy as humanly possible. And remember, we never give up, we never give in, but we keep an open mind so we can gather our knowledge, which is what informs our power, the only power we will ever have. So, take care folks, love you all, and we'll chat soon.